What's going on, Warriors? Today, we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about setting up your insulin pump for better success when it comes to controlling your blood sugar levels. All right, so if it's your first time on the channel, guys, I help diabetics to control their blood sugars, build muscle, and burn body fat. But hey, if you're not a diabetic, but you like things like supplement reviews, you like vlog style videos or food reviews, I also do those too. So make sure you guys smash that subscribe button down below, hit that bell notification, hit that like button so you guys don't miss out on any of these videos. And as usual, guys, make sure you guys share this with somebody that could benefit from videos like this to help them take things to a whole other level with their diabetes control, with their health, with their fitness, with whatever it is, or maybe just like entertainment. <laughs> it is what it is. Let's just dive right into this one, guys, and we'll get rolling with it. All right, guys, so when you go on an insulin pump, sometimes you might notice that you've got a lot of basal segments on board, and sometimes these different basal segments that you have are unnecessary for what's going on with your body. Now, a lot of times to reset things, sometimes it's better, unless you're, of course, on an Omnipod 5, for example, which does things, which uses its smart adjust system to be able to dial things in. Usually for other pumps that you're on, you're gonna have multiple basal segments. Even if you're someone that's on an Omnipod 5, but you wanna put it in manual mode for specific reasons, this can really help you to figure out where these segments should be. Now, a lot of times what you wanna start with is one basal segment. If you go back to the foundation or the beginning of what you started with, sometimes going back there and testing this from there can really help you guys out. So all you wanna do is start with a basal segment, one, and throughout the day, you're gonna keep that one basal segment. Now what you're gonna do, and maybe your doctor first prescribed you a basal segment that you could start with so you could see what's going on, or you could just take an average of your basal segments that you currently have and start there and see how well your body responds to this. And all you're gonna do is fast for 24 hours. When you fast for 24 hours, you're gonna leave your basal segment in place and you're going to pay attention and notice what happens during different times of the day while you're fasting with this one basal segment because now you'll be able to see more fluctuations with your blood sugar levels and you'll know, oh, interesting, in the morning when I'm waking up and adrenaline's kicking in or between the hours of 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. when cortisol is the highest, I'm going to need a little bit more insulin because my body is more resistant to insulin during those times where cortisol levels are at its peak in the morning. And so you'll be able to see now with the same basal rate, ah, oh, interesting, I'm starting to rise in the morning, I'm starting to drop off later in the morning to the early afternoon, and then maybe you're starting to rise again. Our example there, now our person can take that basal rate, that foundational one they have, and start to shift it to take care of what's happening in the morning and take care of what's happening in the evening. Now you're making those slight adjustments based off the main basal rate you have to really find out how your hormones are impacting your body's blood sugar levels. And what's also important is to, and by doing this, you can also see firsthand how these different hormones impact your body. For example, when you fall asleep, you know within that third sleep cycle, your body's gonna increase growth hormone. For adults, typically that growth hormone is gonna be impacted more during the first two sleep cycles. So you could say within the first four hours of falling asleep, if someone's sleeping for eight hours, growth hormone's gonna be higher. So you might notice that interesting, after an hour of falling asleep and it's not 3 a.m. yet when the dawn phenomenon effect kicks in or cortisol's higher, what else could it be? Maybe that's growth hormone. So if you start noticing a pattern like that, maybe you're, and you have structure to when you fall asleep, now you can just set a basal segment for around that time that's a little bit more aggressive to take care of the increase in glucose from the increase of some of these hormones that are getting triggered during that time. Then also in the evening, maybe again, you will be able to see this by having a steady basal rate that maybe you need less insulin because you're moving more or you're typically more active in the evening. So that's when you would start to dial things down. But if you have too many segments and too many basals going on at the same time, it's kind of hard to isolate what's actually happening with your hormones. And if you've never changed anything before, things that could have changed with your hormones, you didn't even really know it. And so now things are kind of more fluctuated than you want. And if you want to dial them in more, being able to take a step back to kind of reobserve where things are can really help you out. The trick is you don't want to make a test like this during a time when you are working out or you're sick or you're overly stressed. You want to find the very foundation of where you are if those other things were out the window and weren't the case, because then you can build on top of this. Once you have the floor, as I call it, of where your blood sugar should be, now you can start to stack on that floor with the workouts, with maybe you know, you're having a stressful day, or because then you'll be able to point to it and say, oh, typically when I'm not stressed out, 
I'm normal because of the floor that I found for myself. And so I can likely attribute something to being more likely the fact that it was stress or it was the workout. But if you're doing all these things all together and you're trying to navigate how to change your basil, how do you know if it was the basil that needed to change or was the fact that you were just stressed out or was the fact that you worked out or was the fact that you were sick or it was the fact that you were eating throughout the day and your insulin to carb ratio was off. So now you're making adjustments that you didn't need to make because you haven't isolated really anything. And this is the hallmarks of what people do with research. They need to isolate things that they want to look at. So they need to study them and look at them. And you got to look at yourself as a researcher that wants to study because this is going to help you to isolate a lot of these things that are happening with your blood sugar and be able to shift your basal throughout the day based on that. Now what you could also do is break your fast at the 24 hour mark so you can get a good 24 hour reading of what's happening with your blood sugars. Are they increasing? Are they decreasing? And at what time? Then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and break it with a, some carbohydrates and a lean protein usually is okay. Sometimes protein can spike blood sugars. So you could always start off with just carbohydrates and see where your, what your blood sugar does with your insulin to carb ratio. Now, not only have you tested your basal, but you can also test your insulin to carb ratio as well and see how well is that working for you? Did you spike really high out of the gate and come back down normal? Cause that might mean you need to shift your pre bolus to be a little bit earlier. If you spiked early, but ended up normal later on, it just, that would just mean that the glucose broke down faster in your body than the insulin was able to catch up with it. So now you just shift your pre bolus back. Now, if you do this test with your, when you break your fast with your insulin to carb ratio or some carbohydrates and a protein, if you want. Now, if you notice that you go all the way up and it doesn't really spike too much, but it doesn't really come back down to where you were before you ran your test. Now that just means that your insulin to carb ratio is likely off and you need to increase it a little bit more and then just retest the next day. I recommend doing two back to back tests on 24 hours to really get an idea of where it is and keep your bedtime and everything else structured. So if you went to bed at 10 PM the night before, go to bed at 10 PM again the next night when you're running these tests. If you had a cup of cooked white rice to break your fast after 24 hours and that's it, then have a cup of cooked white rice to break your fast the next day and that's it. And then after two days, you'll collect a lot of data. You'll be able to see where things are and you'll start being able to make better shifts where those basal segments need to change, right? So just a little strategy right there for you guys to consider. If you guys want to dial that, those basils in a little bit better on a pump. If you guys have any questions as usual, make sure you guys drop them down below and make sure you guys share this guys. Subscribe. I got you guys covered. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Any questions you have, uh, keep rolling them and we'll talk soon. I got you.